Okay, so now we're going to hear uh, about how uh, what's what's been learned in India uh, with with digitalization, digital identity, and uh, and and how APIs are, are applied there to uh, another organisation that is based in India but is actually building for for the world. So I'm very pleased to welcome our next uh, keynote speaker. Uh, Ramesh Narayanan, who is the Chief Technical Officer of, this is a bit of a mouthful, Ramesh, I'm going to try it, the Modular Open Source Identity Platform. Um, you constantly refer to it as MOSIP, uh, which is much easier to, uh, to follow. But um, uh, Ramesh, you're taking what, uh, what's been learned from the Indian experience uh, with, with digital identity uh, to to other countries that uh, that can really benefit from it. So I'm I'm really really keen to learn more about uh, about how how you're doing that. Thanks, John. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, based on where you are. And can, uh, can you just share your screen, please, so that we can sure. all see? Sure. Just give me. A minute. Uh, okay, I great. hope you yeah, can see the screen. Great. Great. Yep. Uh, thanks, John. Thanks for the opportunity to present MOSIP to this uh, large audience in India. You are right that uh, we did have an exciting start in India to the MOSIP journey. We are, uh, to talk about MOSIP, we are founded in India. We are based in the International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore. We are funded by various philanthropic causes, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Omidyar Network, Data Trust, and NORAD. And our core objective has been to give foundational ID systems for the world. Uh, there's an interesting story of how this all started. Uh, with the success of Aadhaar and demonstration of how Aadhaar can be actually used to uh, deliver social benefits as well as uh, government to citizen services in India. Uh, countries which wanted digital transformation started making the trek to India and they wanted a solution. And uh, in order to make this possible for the world and especially countries with low capacity, MOSIP was uh, conceived and it was conceived as an open source platform. And th this has been built over the last couple of years. And uh, the focus of the platform is to help countries with building a route of trust for identity by providing a foundational identity layer. We have seen the success of how uh, standards and stacks which build upon each other help in promotion of uh, various digital governance initiatives. So. MOSIP also is designed along the lines that it will form one of the layers of service delivery at the root uh, and focusing on identity. So we offer ID lifecycle management, including issuance, update, and so on, and uh, verification of identity and presence assurance. Our journey, as I said, started roughly two and a half years ago. Uh, it's going to be three years soon. So we were conceived in August in 2018, and uh, the work began there at that point of time. And then we published our first set of uh, code in open in 2019. We have had a uh, feature complete version early last year. And after that, we have uh, been used in various pilots, and the software has grown feature rich till this year sometime we have had philippines go live with our software and morocco who's one of our early adopters is also on the verge of going live soon with mosif with this we will be catering to about roughly 150 million people uh, who would be provided foundational id through mosif in these two countries apart from these two countries we also have Ethiopia and Guinea doing pilots 
and uh, there are other countries who are uh, interested uh, more more things in the pipeline as such so we are working on creating playbooks of how countries can go live faster what are the principles to be adopted how to design their identity systems generally trying to help low capacity countries to get up to speed with their identity infrastructure as i said we are open source and we are not for profit we work with various partners in our ecosystem who actually take these solutions to the countries we don't directly implement these solutions it is done by the ecosystem i'll move on quickly to today's topic which is about uh, digital trust infrastructure and what mosip uh, does as part of uh, this push so why do we need a digital trust infrastructure what is this really there are lots of terms that are floating around let's take a quick look into digital transformation what digital future would look like we all have uh, had opportunities at different times maybe to travel uh, but as part of any international travel we would have gone and applied for a visa so i have just taken that as a case to demonstrate the kind of checks that happen before a visa is sanctioned so whoever is applying they need to be sure of their identity and if, if the visa is related to employment abroad employment records are checked educational qualifications are verified and uh, does the person who is traveling have sufficient financial backing in order to be able to go and survive in the country uh, where they are headed to other background checks are there any outstanding civil or criminal cases or anything else of note that one needs to be worried about is the person sufficiently insured is there health coverage travel insurance uh, and nowadays we need to even produce uh, certificates whether you are vaccinated for covid yellow fever many depending on the destination health checks are also there so and there's no end to it right so there can be more and more checks most of these now happen by way of somebody producing all this as paper documentation there's a painstaking review and there are multiple days of processing and then we get our visa so this this is the norm but in the future in a connected world where all these uh, can be verified and checked online what would happen is we would produce all this information in a digital format and it would all get uh, verified and validated even services like background check which include maybe even some physical activity of somebody going and uh, doing a check basically all those could be interacted with and availed uh, through a digital interface now this this sounds like something that is in action in many places but trust me it's all happening in bits and pieces it's it's not one seamless uh, happening for it to be real time or for it to be smooth or very straightforward uh, the reason is that Uh, while this has been visualized long back implementing such a mechanism where everything works together seamlessly has not been easy how do we actually get that going so there are two essential parts to make this actually happen the first is something that everybody knows which is interoperability uh, open apis and the api culture is actually bringing in a lot of interoperability and if these apis are standards based and everybody adopts the same set of apis and standards interoperability goes up right uh, but then interoperability is only one part of the story the other part of the story is that in a digital world trust works in a very different way than how it works in the real world in a in a real world when we are talking about trusting documents we look at holograms on the uh, identity cards whether the passports are fakes or not whether the notes the currency that we have whether they are genuine currency or it's or not all that there are lots of security features that are incorporated in 
in the documents and uh, there is a lot of chances of fraud which are there right and the real world is geared toward dealing with these frauds but when we move to the online world the frauds take uh, do happen there and they are actually of a very different nature and uh, businesses have to be geared to dealing with uh, fraud as well as uh, uh, trust issues in the digital world so how do we deal with that so if we look at what a trusted transaction is so this is how i would uh, split a trusted transaction in the digital world as so one is the parties who are involved in the transaction they have to be trusted so are they even supposed to be in the transaction are they if somebody is a source of information are they a certified source of information is somebody accessing the information authorized to access it so the parties who are there as part of any digital transaction should be uh, known and verified and trusted second is chat the transaction itself might happen over various channels today we talked uh, we heard about upi and banking having various channels there are chat bots coming up there are apis to be called there are apps to be used websites that can be used and somebody can always walk in into the bank and do so irrespective of what the channel is uh, the omni channel strategy that uh, businesses have all these channels wherever the transactions have to happen they have to be secure they have to be reliable uh, they have to ensure that the information that is flowing through is uh, protected and kept private and there's no leakage of information so the channels have to be trusted so if we have trusted parties interacting over a trusted channel and information flows across so there is back and forth of information in any transaction right and uh, this information could pertain to uh, data about a person data about the transaction documents uh, or even money that is flowing right how do we trust the information that is flowing so we have to be sure that it has not been tampered with or changed by a hacker it's not been the transaction itself has not been fabricated and put into the system so uh, any piece of data that is flowed we would like to be sure that it is valid and that it is attested by the source and that that information is current so if we can trust the data then the whole process the transaction actually now is working with trusted parties the trusted data and the process can be completed to finish the transaction but another key aspect of all this is the governance of how uh, all this happens there has to be transparency in the system there has to be means for redressal there should be non repudiation where people cannot deny that this transaction has happened and uh, walk back on it so in order to ensure that uh, these are there the uh, the process framework or the api system or whatever mechanism for these transactions are supported they should have good governance practices and logging and in place with mosip what we do is focus on one small portion of this trust which is trust in the identity so we we said we need to trust the parties who are there in the transaction so these parties could be businesses they could be individuals we at mosip focus on trust in identity of the individuals who are uh, there in the any kind of transaction let's look at what capabilities the mosip offers in order to uh, build trust in identity so we as part of the onboarding or enrollment process where the user database the national id database is built we take care uh, that there is validation of the information that is being done right on, in terms of proof being provided there are verification processes there are various checks to uh, ensure that the data quality is good and once that uh, high quality data is there in the database in the registry of people we use that high quality information in order to perform identity verification so at uh, any point of time in a digital transaction whether it is uh, 
opening of a bank account or whether it is transfer of a money in any any of these cases where a person wants to establish their identity if i make a claim that i am ramesh and i have to prove that mosep offers or the national id solution which is built on mosep offers these kind of uh, capabilities we can do authentication via an api which is going to say whether the information shared matches the records that are there in the database so it will say uh, yes or no uh, as a response and with that we can actually verify whether the information submitted is accurate so that is one way of authenticating another way of authentication is to actually also check the not just the information whether the person who is present is actually who they can claim to be so presence assurance is something that we bring on the basis of biometrics uh, as authentication factors so we support at this point of time face iris and fingerprint based authentication factors other authentication biometric authentication factors can be added uh, the system is extensible in that sense and uh, so the multi factor authentication can help with presence assurance as well as verification of information submitted so instead of submission of information what if people can rely on the information that is already there in our database so that is where we offer uh, kyc apis so we have electronic kyc support where if the user provides consent and authorizes the transaction then the based on who is the relying party we share the information back as a record and this record is signed by the national id system so that it can be trusted data and this contains the attributes that are required for the relying party so for for example we could give the name date of birth and address for uh, the opening of the bank account and maybe along with a photograph so these all could be information which is given out as part of the uh, kyc api so apart from having api based access we also have support for non api access through a uh, way of credentials that can be shared so users can request credentials from the system and then these credentials can be shared up these credentials are also signed by the issuer which is the national id system and then uh, it contains information based on the type of credential so credentials could be very minimal in nature or they could be uh, full fledged so on basis of actual usage the credentials can be created with selective disclosure in that and the form of credentials could be as a qr code or as a json object and so on what uh, we do is follow a standard called verifiable credentials which is w3c uh, standard and uh, this allows these credentials to be consumed by any w3c compatible client and apart from it being w3c compliant it is also uh, very readable it's json based and uh, can it can be very easily programmed and accessed so any relying party who has given this credential can verify these credentials are genuine uh, based on the digital signature and then start consuming this information so we have the ability to uh, do identity verification through credentials in the offline mode where the relying party does not have to be connected to our system or if they want they can check it online by through our api so this allows real time as well as asynchronous processing we also support uh, request uh, mechanisms where we can actually publish information any updates in let's say my address has changed or something like that if i wish to publish it to existing uh, kyc consumers we can actually publish that information also so we have a subscription uh, mechanism for that and our authentication can be done from one server or it could be multiple servers even third party servers can be set up for uh, providing the authentication and ekyc data delivery so centralized and federated models of uh, authentication are uh, possible
coming back to uh, trust, these APIs and these features in MOSIP provide the trust. So if we look at it, any instance of MOSIP is actually a trust provider. And if we go back to the Visa use case, the identity service would be one of the trust providers. And there'll be other trust providers who would provide trust on uh, other aspects. Like while we verify identity-based claims, other claims such as uh, the degrees held or the skills held or the employment records, those claims can be verified by other providers. So when, when it comes to any relying party application that wants to actually uh, verify claims, if they hit a trust network, a trust network can actually have a list of providers, including universities, ID systems, and employers, banks, and various claims can actually be verified by these providers using some standard mechanism. So this is where common uh, digital trust infrastructure starts uh, coming into play, where there are various trust frameworks that have been set up across the uh, globe. The India stack is uh, a famous example where uh, we have the DigiLocker, eSign, and uh, ePraman. Uh, so a lot, lot of these are, are provided as services where uh, documents or the person's presence and association with documents and all, all can be verified uh, using these trust mechanisms. PKI infrastructure is used, digital signatures are issued uh, and uh, uh, information is signed using these digital uh, signatures so they become trusted. So these capabilities are offered by a set of services which are typically part of a digital trust infrastructure. Uh, Canada has something called pan-canadian trust framework uk has its own trust framework there is a linux foundation initiative called trust over ip which also is trying to see how to bring together a standards-based implementation of trust infrastructure so what does a trust infrastructure or a trust framework uh, typically look like if we are looking at uh, how services and various providers and relying parties can come in and work together. There has to be obviously some shared infrastructure and this shared infrastructure, if it is within a country, it can be administered by uh, somebody within the country. If it is global, there will be multiple parties who would be administrating this uh, commonly. So blockchain is something that has been proposed in uh, various cases. But generally, these infrastructure would operate on what I would call as a collective mistrust or a zero trust uh, architecture to ensure that uh, no single person can control or modify or change that uh, trustworthiness of the whole network. Right. And uh, this infrastructure brings in a lot of accountability because there will be governance, the ability to seek legal recourse and transparency on what is happening. This gives a lot of comfort for the actual consumers to be part of such a network. Of course, security and privacy are things that are paramount and need to be addressed uh, at the design stage itself in any such uh, trust framework. And uh, usage of standard schemas and uh, open APIs allow interoperability to uh, flourish in such environments. Hey, hey Ramesh. Um, yep. yep. We have a, some great questions in the sure. in the chat, actually. Uh, okay. if, if you're okay. ready for them, so the first one is: uh, Is there a, a how does somebody get enrolled as a developer uh, for Mossop? Is there a developer portal that you have? Sure. Yes. Sure. Yes. Uh, so, so, if if you look at it, we have uh, our information in docs.mossop.io. Our source code is available in GitHub. Uh, at the moniker github.com slash mosip and mm -hmm. basic information is available at uh, our website mosip.io so it can be accessed we are an open source initiative and we are working on these open standards components and tooling and our focus is on delivering services to people and these services will come from the ecosystem and we build reference implementation of these services we welcome people here to come and participate in such exercises mm -hmm. Okay, so the next, another question very, very relevant was, 
you're a not-for-profit, you do things uh, with governments. Um, is it possible uh, for people to use uh, the MOSFET solution or the API to, uh, in, in a business scenario? Uh, yes. So while it is intended as a foundational identity system for governments, it can also be used for creating functional ID systems. It can be extended. Uh, we have certain basic checks and balances built in for uh, foundational identity systems. These may have to be replaced uh, and made a little more flexible for adoption for private usage, but it is possible, very possible. So that's why you call it modular. Okay. Yes, it, it is modular. Okay. All right. So um, we we have a limited amount of time. I saw you had a great slide about interoperability. Do you want to just talk about that for a moment? Because it sort of plays into the business scenarios and, and other things. And I did actually have a question about um, where do, where do um, uh, organizations start? Because I know that uh, in... Uh, countries that have a strong national digital identity, uh, like India, Singapore, Estonia, have been able to use that uh, foundation for a provision of lots of different services. And I know that you're working with several uh, governments in Asia and Africa to help them set up their, their own national digital infrastructure. But where, where do you start? with that what, what, right. what's, what's the journey look like uh in order to to build this this um national digital identity that other uh, people can build on top of right so identity is a good starting part because uh, as i said uh, verification or trust in identity of the parties involved in transactions is the first starting point and a lot of uh, transactions also involve money and uh, Roping in a payments mechanism, payment stack also helps a lot. And apart from that, uh, key interoperability, actually interoperability comes from being able to work, uh, transform even legacy systems into API based systems. Like just by building a small layer on top of it, it is possible to start uh, making applications talk to each other. The key is, these should not be done in silos. Uh, they should be uh, governed and should be a common effort where uh, schemas and interfaces are published so that everybody adheres to the same set. Uh, one challenge that I do see is that while this is being done at a national level, these challenges are going to go global. Uh, we are looking at cases where people want to move freely across borders and uh, economic cooperation in regions. They want to have KYC capability for opening bank accounts in any of the countries. It's a common mechanism. So uh, while everybody is defining their own trust frameworks and uh, APIs and schemes within the countries, it's, it's important to actually start having a global uh, understanding and use common standards and mechanisms across the globe. Thanks, Thanks very much for those insights. And um, I, someone has kindly uh, copied the, the URL to your documentation uh, in the chat there. So uh, you can expect a lot of visitors to, uh, to, to that site. Um, you. You're actually going to be coming back later to join in a roundtable discussion on identity as a foundation for, for digital services. So we're, we're looking forward to, to your, your joining that panel. That's at uh, 2.05 p.m. Uh, India time, um, and I'm sure that a lot of people who have already heard part of the the, the Mossop story will will want to uh, will want to come back for for that. So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Ramesh, for for those insights, and I wish you all the all the best.